let's move on to the next case study this case study i have picked up from rtp of icai gz limited pays the following to a skilled worker engaged in production works the following are the employee benefits paid to the employee you are given basic salary per day 1000 dearness allowance it's 20% of basic salary hra 16% of basic salary transport allowance it is rupees 50 per day of actual work overtime it is given as twice the hourly rate considers basic and da only if works more than 9 hours a day otherwise no overtime allowance if works for more than 9 hours a day then overtime is considered after 8 hours okay work of holiday and sunday it is double of per day basic rate provided works at least 4 hours the holiday and sunday basic is eligible for all allowances and statutory deductions next earned leave and casual leave these are all paid leave okay then employee's contribution to provident fund is 12% of basic nda employee's contribution to pension fund is 7% of basic and da the company normally works 8 hour a day and 26 days in a month the company provides 30 minutes lunch break in between during the month of august 2020 mr z worked for 23 days including 15th august and a sunday and applied for 3 days of casual leave already we have seen casual leave or paid leave and he worked on 15th august which is a holiday and he also worked on sunday then these norms are applicable provided they he worked for at least 4 hours okay on 15th august and sunday he worked for 5 and 6 hours respectively without lunch break so he complied with this condition yeah on 5th and 13th august he worked for 10 and 9 hours respectively so this attracts overtime but overtime is available only when he works beyond 9 hours on 5th he worked for 10 hours which is beyond 9 hours so overtime hours will be calculated from 8 hours so 10 minus 8 2 hours is the overtime and what is the charges it is twice the hourly rate so once we find the hourly rate we can multiply that but on 13th august he worked for 9 hours which is beyond 8 hours but it is not beyond 9 hours so he is not eligible for overtime wages During the month, Mr. Z worked for 100 hours on job number HT 200. You are required to calculate earnings per day, effective wages rate per hour of Mr. Z, and wages to be charged to job number HT 200. Okay, so the basic details already we have discussed. So we'll directly get into the calculation. Question one. That is, we have to calculate earnings per day. Let's start with basic salary. what is the basic salary of what what's his name mr z right okay it is 1000 and for how many days he worked he worked for 23 days and he took 3 days of casual leave so casual leaves are paid leave so basic salary is going to be it is rupees 1000 into 26 days so it's going to be 26000 1000 into 26 fine then he is also eligible for dearness allowance right dearness allowance and that is given as 20% of basic salary so here we have the basic salary 26000 multiplied by 20% we get 5200 okay right so these two are very important and it is 31200 now let's calculate the other things he is eligible for hra which is 16% of basic salary only so we'll capture that house rent allowance which is 16% of basic salary only so we'll go and apply that 26000 into 16% so 4160 then there is employer's contribution to provident fund to pension fund but that is 12% of basic nda and 7% of basic nda so let's capture that 
employer's contribution to provident fund and it is 12% of this figure that is basic plus DA. So let me put it like this. This 31200 is basic plus DA multiplied by 12%. So we get 3744. And there is also employer's contribution for employer's contribution is also available for pension fund. And that is at the rate of 7% of this figure, right? Multiplied by 7%, so it is 2184. Let's sum all this now. That is, we should start from here. Yeah. So, what do we get now? It is 41,288. And of course, he is also getting uh, some transport elements which we will take at the end. So, for how many days he worked? It is 23 plus 3 because casual holidays is also paid leave. So, number of uh, working days including paid leaves. So, it is basically 23 plus 3, 26 days. So, now if you divide this, you get the weight per day. That is 41 to 88 divided by 26, you get uh, rate per day. And with this, we will add the transport allowance. See, this transport allowance he is going to get for the number of days he is going to come, right? Okay, so if he had come for 23 days, then he will get it only for 23 days. So, transport allowance is 50 per day of actual work, okay? So, that's the reason we have not included here because uh, if I include that and if I divide it by 26, then that could give a wrong picture, okay? So, we'll take transport allowance per day and that is 50. Now, if we add these two, we'll get 1,638. This is nothing but earnings per day. This is nothing but earnings per day. So, we have answered question 1, that is earnings per day. Next, moving on to question 2, we have to calculate effective wage rate per hour of Mr. Z. So, we have to look at it from company's point of view. So, here we have the calculation, calculation of, calculation of effective wage rate per hour of Mr. Z. Right. So, again, we have to start with basic salary. As far as the basic salary is concerned, there is no difference. So, I will simply copy this. Basic salary is 26,000. Okay, right. Then comes some additional basic salary. Why I am saying additional basic salary? Because he worked on holiday and Sunday. And this holiday and Sunday basic is eligible for allowances and statutory deductions. Okay. So, we will add that there is additional basic salary for Sunday. He worked for one Sunday and he worked on 15th August, that is holiday. Okay. So, he worked for two days, right? Two days multiplied by at what rate wage is given? It is double of basic rate. So, it is, I will put it like this. 2 days multiplied by 2 times into basic wage rate which is 1000. So, 1000 into 2 days into 2 times. What do you get? 4000. So, this is very important because in various calculations we are going to treat basic salary as 26 plus 4 that is 30,000. Okay. And even dearness allowance is going to be calculated as percentage of basic salary, right? So, dearness allowance, which is 20% of basic, including the additional basic salary. So, it's going to be 26 plus 4 multiplied by 20% and we get 6,000, okay? Let's total all the three and what we are getting is 36,000. Now, let's calculate house rent allowance. And what is information? It is 16% of basic salary. 16% of basic salary. And what is basic salary uh, for this purpose? And what is the information we have regarding uh, house rent allowance? Yeah, sorry. 
it is 16 percent of basic salary only not including da and all okay so we have to treat these two as basic that is 30000 multiplied by 16 percent multiplied by 16 percent okay then let us also factor the transport allowance now because now we are looking at it from company's point of view transport allowance we know he worked only for 23 days into rupees 50 per day so it is 23 into 50 1150 then there is also overtime allowance what is the overtime allowance Yes, already we, we touched on that we discussed that is he worked on two days on one day he worked for 10 hours and on the other day he worked for nine hours nine hours we can exclude but for the day where he worked for 10 hours we can compute overtime as difference between 10 minus 8 that is two hours okay two hours and for this two hours he'll be paid wages twice the normal rate he'll be paid wages what twice the normal rate now the question is what is that normal rate so let me have a small working note let me just increase the font size also here yeah computation of normal computation of normal rate okay so how we are going to do that we know the basic rate is 1000 okay this is what basic rate per day just go back yeah here you can see basic salary per day is 1000 then with that if you add da it's going to be 1000 into 20 percent so it is 1200 so total how much it is 1200 this is what paid per day okay and you divide this by number of hours worked actually they work for eight hours per day of which 30 minutes goes for lunch so number of hours worked is 7.5 so now if you take 1200 divided by 7.5 you get 160 this 160 is nothing but that normal rate and twice of normal rate have to be given for overtime okay so two hours into two times into the normal rate which is 160 let's put that here it is 160 into 2 into 2 so you get 640 next we have employers contribution to provident fund employers contribution to provident fund and what is the understanding it is 12 percent of basic plus da so what is going to be the basic plus da here we have to take this 36,000 because that's the basic plus additional basic plus da multiplied by 12 percent which works out to 4320 then there is also employers contribution to which fund pension fund pension fund and that is also calculated on this figure but multiplied by 7 percent you get 2520 okay let's total all this now we get to know what is the total monthly wages i think we should start from here yes so this is going to be the total monthly wages which is 49430 okay now we have to find out effective wage rate per hour right so how do we find out that we have to take what is the hours worked by mr z let's capture that hours worked by mr z let's do a small calculation for that let me put that here see he worked for 23 days and all the 23 days he would have worked for 7.5 hours right so that's one then on sunday he worked and on independence day also he worked and what is the information we have regarding the hours in sunday and independence day okay 
uh, Sunday it is 6 hours and Independence Day it is 5 hours. So we have to add this also. So it is plus 11 hours. Okay. Plus there is also an overtime element. On one day he worked for 10 hours and on the other day he worked for 9 hours. Which is greater than 8. Okay. So we should factor that also. So the day he worked for 9 hours it is additional 1 hour. The day he worked for 10 hours, it is additional 2 hours. Let's see. This calculation takes us to 186.5. So this is the hours worked by Z in that full month. Okay. Now, 49.430 divided by 186.5 will give the exact effective wage rate per hour. So effective wage rate per hour is nothing but 265.04. Now let's answer question 3 also. What is the wages that should be charged to job number? Okay. So in job number HT200, he worked for uh, 100 hours. Right. And now we know what is the effective wage rate, which is 265.04. So let's answer question C also. Calculation of wages to be charged to job number HT200. So this is basically 265.04 per hour multiplied by 100 hours and it works out to 26,504.02. So this is answering question 3 or question C.